Hi, I'm Aaron Wedeking, co-founder and president of PRP Seats, and we're celebrating our 25th year this year. So we're gonna dive into a little detail of uh, what we were doing 25 years ago. PRP Seats started in 1997. I was 21, uh, a good buddy of mine that I grew up with, like playing t-ball with and stuff. His parents owned a plastic molding injection business, and his dad was really into off-road racing. We were building a Baja bug in his garage uh, and having no money, trying to figure out how to build it without money. We just, I mean, we built a lot of our own parts and uh, Seats was one of them. His, uh, his dad had an idea to, to uh, build shocks. That was kind of a time when long travel dune buggies were just really getting started. So his dad wanted to build shocks, uh, seats, he had a few ideas, and, and, and seats was definitely something that uh, we picked up on and ran with. And you know, that's really kind of where the idea came from was just uh, you know, a couple of kids super passionate about it, trying to figure out how to, how to do their own thing with no money. <laughs> After building our first set of seats for our own race car, we were, we actually were out in Akatia. I had just turned 21, like I mentioned, and we were headed to uh, Desert Ironwoods to become an official asshole. So it was a pretty, uh, pretty exclusive club. Growing up, I was excited to be a part of it. The first set of seats we made were in this Baja bug that we put together. We were out beating it up in Akatia, uh, daydreaming about racing it someday at Glen Helen, which we, we did eventually. We were never really good at that, but uh, we had a lot of fun, so. But when we were talking about you know the progress that we made on that bug, the, the seats were something that we were really proud of, and we decided you know what let's go home and and give this a shot, see if we can't build eight seats. So we had just done two, so let's let's see if we can do eight. So when we got home from that trip, you know we, we bought some steel, bought some fabric, bent up bent up the two, built the seat frames, drove around to upholstery shops trying to find somebody to sew you know the the structure of the seat and the cover. Uh, we found a local guy that helped us out. We built eight seats. I put them in the back of my green 1994 Ford Ranger and drove to Oceanside to visit Gary at BNR Buggies, who I didn't really know that well, but I had been down there buying parts off and on for years uh, being a buggy guy. So uh, I felt somewhat comfortable talking to him. And so I brought these eight seats down to him and tried to convince him to buy them. So. That was the first, uh, you know, the first kind of run of seats. We really didn't have a name yet. We didn't know what we were calling them. Uh, we, just, we just made some seats, threw them in the truck and, and brought them down to see Gary. So Gary was uh, our very first customer. I, I drove down to B&R Buggies in Oceanside with eight seats in the back of that green Ford Ranger. Drove in to see him and I think I got there at right about the right time, right? It was perfect timing. I was a beer dealer for many years and uh, they were just shut, sold the place, they were shutting the doors. And so I had talked to Ed and Barbara and they go, well, if you need another seat, you better find somebody. And it just so happens, Aaron come walking through the front door and had a bunch of seats for sale. So we talked and I bought them all. Yeah. Yeah, I think, if I remember right, they were like a hundred bucks, maybe was what I was selling them to you for? Yeah, it was, at that time, that was really nothing compared to nowadays. I mean, you yeah. can't even buy a cover for a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can't even build a cover no, for a hundred bucks. But back bucks. then, yeah. you know, everybody was buying suspension seats because it was the new thing coming up. Yeah. It's getting more popular. Yeah, it was definitely the hot thing, right? We were going from fiberglass or plastic seats plastic to... Plastic cells. Yeah. With carpet padding as a cushion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the multicolored uh, yeah. ground up that foam. That worked pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a big change. It was a big change in the buggy world at that time, too. I mean, the dune buggies were really putting more horsepower, more suspension. More suspension. It forced car people, the car manufacturers, especially us, to make our frames wider so the seat would fit in there. Yeah. Because the earlier cars were narrower, and they'd take a fiberglass bucket seat and a plastic seat, it will fit in anything. Yep. The suspension seat's wider and taller, so we raised the cage, widened the frame, and yeah. it worked out fine. We just happened to kind of be at the right place at the right time with, with building those That's seats. perfect timing. So yeah, after I left, I think I had like $800. 21 years old, $800, <laughs> I'd never seen that much money. I was so excited, I and mean, I ran back to my buddy, like, dude, we gotta do this again, we gotta make some more of these things. You know, Gary says he could use some more. Uh, you know, totally oblivious to what the rest of the US was doing, what the rest of the off-road market was doing, 
We just, you know, a guy that I bought parts from was interested in buying stuff for me was so cool. I mean, that was, that was pretty exciting, uh, pretty exciting time. So yeah, we went home and then, uh, you know, definitely got a little more serious about it. That's, uh, um, you know, that's when we started looking at what type of options we were going to carry. What was our, you know, what was our name going to be? You know, we were, when we first started his, I don't remember her name, to be honest with you. We were in Rainbow up in that a little, like, it's now an avocado packing plant or yeah. something. But it was a, a tiny building in Rainbow where his parents had plastic molding injection business. And so we were going to be Rainbow Racing. I'm glad that didn't stick. <laughs> <laughs> like Rainbow Wallets? <laughs> I'm glad that one didn't stick. But anyways, that was, uh, that was the first name that went around. And then, uh, you know, my buddy was definitely more creative than I was. And Scott came up with the name of... Uh, premier racing products yeah i remember yeah. scott yeah. yeah i remember scott yeah so scott came with prp and that's uh you know that's the name that that's the name that stuck that we that we ran with we worked out of his uh out of that plastic molding injection business for a few months until his parents kind of shut that down and we moved the seat business was the only thing that really survived and we moved that into um his garage actually right up here in Duluth. like it's it's crazy because the, the, that place now overlooks our current facility. It's a big house on a hill up here. So we were in, we were in their garage, three of us, I guess, building, building seats. It was you yeah. and Scott and somebody else. Yeah, it was me and Scott and then one of the guys from the plastic molding injection business, Miguel, that stuck around and, yeah. and helped us out. So, And it definitely felt like, you know, just kind of something fun that we were doing for, for quite a few years, really, before we... Uh, you know, before we really took it serious, you know, I didn't really take it too serious myself until I got married and started having kids. That was 2001. That's when it was like, uh, you better grow up and grow up fast. <laughs> <laughs> so our first, uh, our first kind of run at, uh, at building seats was, you know, and kind of a business model for us was we were going to offer three options. I don't know if you remember, but we had a, a black, a gray, and a blue. Mm -hmm. uh, that was it. Yeah. All three. Yeah. And then there was still, I mean, the competitors were still doing multiple colors. If the I remember. only competition back then, you had Mastercraft yep. and, and beard. beard. Well, Beard was. They kind of went downhill after that guy bought it. Yeah, yeah. They lost all the dealers in San Diego because pretty much everybody, after I started buying them, everybody else kind of followed suit. Yeah. And pretty soon they had a lot of dealers in, in the Southern Cal area. Yeah, yeah, it didn't take, it didn't take too long. I think we really kind of had the timing right. With, no, the timing was perfect. Yeah, with coming in and we were, we were delivering, I mean, our goal was to try to deliver quicker, uh, Cut down on some of the options. We weren't doing a lot of custom stuff. We were building one seat, the Premier, and three different colorways. So 2001 is when uh, 2001 is about the time frame that my friends took off. Uh, Scott and Butch and his family they they took off and uh, moved to Nebraska actually. And then uh, it was around the time Maddie was born. My first daughter was born, and so. We, my wife and I took it real serious at that point. That's when we, we decided that we really needed to make a go out of this to make a living. And so we moved it into uh, my garage in Escondido. I was living in Escondido and my dad was living in the home I grew up in in Temecula. And so we split, we had PRP kind of split into two, two garages. We were, the guy that was sewing our seat covers was living in my motor home right on the side of my house. <laughs> And then the seat frames were being made up in Temecula, my dad's garage. And uh, yeah, that was a cluster. We were running around every night trying to, trying to put, put seats together, together and get, get it going. But we were, we were definitely making an effort. And I've been asked this before, like was there you know, a big turning point for PRP where you knew you kind of made it? And uh, you know, I, I wish uh, businesses work like that, but in my experience is it's you know, like a, a win and then a kick in the nuts, and then a win, and then a kick in the nuts. And there's never like that big turning point where you really know like, hell yeah, I made it. It's like, okay, I did something good. Now, where the hell is that bad thing coming? Because it always did. It does. <laughs> it always Every does, time. right? We definitely had a lot of good wins. We had, uh, you know, definitely linking up with you, giving me the confidence to say, keep going, you know, 
keep making these things. That was that was huge, uh, a first step. And then um, we, uh, you know, when, when we kind of took it a little more serious in 2001, my wife and I got involved and we were both working really hard trying to, trying to, to make it float. That was a, a big step for us. Um, Cartech, we were able to talk Cartech into to switching over to our That's seats. Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that. That was 2002 time frame. And, um, you know, those guys, super knowledgeable. They've been in the industry a long time, very well respected. And so when they start giving you advice, you just shut the hell up and listen, you know. Yeah. And uh, um, it was really nice uh, having them kind of guide me as well, those guys up there. So 2007, from 2001 to 2007 was a pretty crazy time in the off-road world. I mean, it was nuts. It was nuts. People were refinancing their houses to build buggies. Yeah. Couldn't get, you could not get enough parts to sell. That was definitely an explosive time for the, for the dune buggy world. And that's about all that we really focused on was the, the dune buggy world. We had a, a few Jeep products, you know, as our, as those years went on, our product kind of evolved to, mm -hmm. we did some of the low sided stuff so the Jeep guys could get in and out of it a little bit easier. Um, started making the seats wider, deeper, taller. We used to call them the BA seats, which you can't say no more. <laughs> right. The it's big not, ass it's not politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> now it's two inch extra wide or three inch extra wide. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, those were, those were pretty explosive years. And then I had a, uh, in 2007, I had a group of guys come in that were interested in buying PRP. And, uh, so I stepped out for 08 and 09. Uh, probably good timing on my part, bad timing for them. I mean, that, those were, again, horrific years for the yeah. off-road industry. I mean, it, it went from, Bad for everybody. It was bad for everybody. Yeah, it didn't really matter what, what industry you're in. So those are some pretty bad years. And then um, I got an opportunity to get back in in 2010. And so uh, kind of came back in. And that, uh, again, as a, one of those kind of turning points, at one point we had, you know, 40 or 50 employees. In 2010, we had nine uh, you know, it was it, it, huge swings from, from great to horrible again. And, and so it was rebuilding. It was almost like starting over again in, in 2010. That. Yeah. So then we had a, you know, a couple of, a couple of wins after that. Uh, you know, the biggest thing was when the UTVs came around, you know, and in 07, we got to see the rhinos and those were, those were, uh, <laughs> golf carts, golf carts. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't grow up in the off-road world and take those serious when they came out. No, it was, it was a joke. Like, what are we doing? And then they had those Chinese things. Remember those? Oh, yeah. Those yeah, were yeah, even yeah. worse. Yeah, those were even worse. And it, but, to, but to take those serious was, you know, you're looking back and, I mean, shame on me for, for joking about them for so long because that's our bread and butter now. <laughs> but at the time, I'm not going to build seats for golf carts. That's not what we do. And so. we used to sell a lot of the little kid seats. Yeah. The little baby seats. Yep. You know, what do they call those? Um, we called them preemies. Preemies. Yeah. We used to sell a lot of those. It was kind of interesting because people would come and buy them, and I told them, when you're done, bring it back. And the kid would grow out of it, so they'd bring it back to the shop. I'd give them trading back in and sell it to somebody else. It worked at a big circle. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah, those were, they're still worth more today than they were when we sold them brand yeah. new. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to find. <laughs> hard to find. There's... Uh, kids and off-road is tough. There's no safe way to do it. And so yeah. we come up with, you know, ways that make sense for us, for guys that are used to doing things on our own. And uh, it worked well, but to, to sell that on a mass scale takes takes uh, all kinds of testing and insurance and things. We used to that, take uh, the car seat, get a bunch of bungee cords. Yeah. That's all there was to do. Yeah, or ratchet strap, try yeah. to hold, hold the kids in. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I guess another big kind of turning point for us was in 2014 or so, around that time, um, uh, Polaris was looking to do a special edition UTV and they were looking for a seat to put in it. And that was, I don't know if you remember that Jagged X mm -hmm. Razor that came out, but that was a big yeah. win for us. We, I'm pretty sure we lost money on every seat we sold them. I mean, that was, uh, you know, they, the buyers there did a great job of grinding us and grinding us. And, you know, next thing That's you know, we're, do. you know, huge volume, no money. But the win that came out of that was every Polaris dealer knew who PRP was after that. And that was pretty nice. So our, our employee count in... 12, 13 before we had that Polaris deal was probably in the 20, 15 to 20 range. 
And we had to about double in size employee wise to get to, in order to do that Polaris deal. So, um, you know, we, we had to rent more space. We had to buy more material. We had, you know, everything just kind of escalated. It escalated. Yeah, it really did. So more rent, more work on this comp. Yeah. Yeah. All the fun stuff, <laughs> all the fun stuff doubled too. Yeah. yeah. But the income didn't because <laughs> we weren't making any money. But we, you know, we did, um, you know, what came out of that again, like I say, it's, it's like, you know, that there's a blessing. You think, gosh, we're doing really well. Then you realize, well, I'm not making any money off of them. But then you realize, shoot, everybody knows who we are now, you know, and that was so, uh, I mean, it worked I, out I, good. yeah, it worked out good. I think it's pretty typical in most businesses. There's never this, uh, you, you know, you never get to win the lottery as a business owner. You just kind of. Well, you, as you, you progressed and got more busy and picked up yeah. all the accounts, cool thing was I could still pick up the phone and call and talk to you. Yeah. You know, a lot of people get a fat head and they get kind of stupid, but you're still a personal person. You know, you were at, at the beginning, at the start. Well, that's cool to hear. You know, don't <laughs> tell everybody. <laughs> no, it's been great. You know, we've maintained a, a good friendship through the years. Yeah. No, we have. That's been awesome. Yeah. And when you when you when you shut down BNR, you said, "Hey, if there's ever any opportunity," and right about that time, we ended up picking up Speedstrap. Well, thanks for coming by and let me torture you with some Bud Light. I know yeah. you're. It's, it was rough, but I think I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to run off. So All right. It's really good to see you. You're back to work. We'll see you around. Thank you. See yep. Ya. Good to see you, Gary. I'm keep my cooler cup. <laughs> you know, we, we were working with Polaris there, and they were offering our seats. Um, we really ramped up sales and marketing. That kind of gave me an opportunity to, to, to grow. Uh, made it a lot easier. At least it knocked down the who the heck is PRP comments. Why do we need different seats? These vehicles come with seats. Um, once, once kind of the customer base realized that there was some, you know, better option out there, we we really tried to take advantage of that. So we uh, ramped up sales and marketing. had had a few more guys in here. We were pushing more product. We had the uh, production capacity now that um, you know the stuff with Polaris was kind of winding down. We had the people and the capacity now to build more product. So we were doing that. Um, so from 2014 to 2017, you know, we we uh, we really saw a lot of growth at PRP in sales and in employees and people, and it was starting to get to the point to where, um, you know, I was getting a little uncomfortable. I was trying to figure out how to grow. It's hard when you're when you're growing that fast. It takes a lot of capital. Um, I was doing it all, you know, by myself basically. So trying my damnedest not to take on a bunch of debt I couldn't couldn't control. So kind of mid 17, I started getting some interest from different, uh, you know, different people that and companies that were interested in, in possibly acquiring us that really got my mind thinking because it takes some big balls to go rent a huge building, take on that overhead, take on that lump, you know, when you're signing a lease for 45 grand a month for five years, you're thinking, well, I could sell my house if I had a slow month, but man, that's going to piss off my wife and kids. So, you, you know, it, it's, it's, I, I got to admit that it just takes some huevos to do that. And, uh, and I didn't have it. Like I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, couldn't muster up the, the huevos to, to take PRP to that next level that it really needed to be at. And so when I, when I got offers, um, you know, that were, that were good to, you know, worked with another company that had the financing, that had the ability to take PRP to the next level, and it was going to help our people grow, help the brand grow, help the business grow. I jumped on it. So in in early 2018, um, the guys from Best Top uh, acquired PRP, and it's been a, you know a really awesome partnership uh, since then. We've more than doubled PRP in employees and in size, uh, basically across the board. It's provided a lot of opportunity for a lot of people, and it's been a, uh, a really fun last couple of years getting to, uh, getting to be a part of this. So. PRP is turning 25 this year, and it's, uh, I mean, at 21 years old, uh, to do anything for 25 years seemed unobtainable because I hadn't even been around that long, I hadn't even breathed for that long. So. It's, it's a pretty amazing to look back over the years and uh, you know, see all the, all the changes and all the things that PRP's been through. Um, but you know, 25 years is really kind of hits home for me. 
uh, because at this point I'm, I'm starting to realize that maybe there's something here we've created that's going to outlive me, be around longer than I'm going to be around and hopefully provide these great memories that I've been able to create with my family. And these, this product is going to be a part of, you know, family memories forever. Uh, that's pretty freaking cool. So, uh, you know, the fact that I could be a, a small part in this has been pretty awesome. Um, you know, when uh, you're doing this at work, and uh, you're getting to ride off road and hang out with friends and do something you love, uh, it really doesn't get any better than that. So 25 years and I hope it uh, sticks around for another 125. Cheers to PRP.